Lord! Oh, my Lord, we're gonna freeze! Mumia, Abu Jamal! Brick by brick! Wall by wall, we're gonna freeze! Mumia, Abu Jamal! Brick by brick! Wall by wall, we're gonna freeze! Mumia, Abu Jamal! I'm Johnny Steven with the International Action Center. Today, Henry is here with me from the New York Free Mamiya Coalition to campaign to bring Mamiya home, the international friends and family of Mamiya Abu Jamal, the Honduran comrades, all the friends and everyone on the demonstration, from Pop, everyone. Say, free them all, now, free them all. Free them all. Free them all. We're happy for y'all to join us today, and we want to get some a youth speaker in here. We want to start this rally off for the youth speaker. We've been able to have this rally in a lot of cities around the country where people will speak about, but we've been able to go to the campuses, and we've been able to go to the community, and we have someone that we want to introduce that Gil from the Free Mamiya Coalition will introduce this person to join us. All right, I'm here to talk about the Bronx, all right? We got a brother here, Donnie K. Vaughn Rivers. He's been organizing I Am My Community in the Bronx, delivering mental health services to people that our system has let go. My mom worked for 20 years in the state mental hospital, and that they cut the budget, and they put them all out on the street. So K. Vaughn's out on the street, delivering mental health services. And he's organizing I Am My Community, which is an umbrella of all the organizations working for people in the Bronx. He's also teaching nonviolent conflict resolution to kids in the schools, in the high schools, in the middle schools, to keep them safe, to keep them from an occupied police state, okay? So I want to introduce, again, Donnie K. Bourne Rivers, founder of I Am My Community, and the next state assemblyman from the 86th district in the South Bronx. Let's everybody give a hand for Donnie K. Bourne Rivers. K. Bourne for the 86th. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you everybody for having me out here today. Uh, my name is Donnie K. Bourne Rivers. I'm the founder of a nonprofit organization called I Am My Community. I Am My Community, we promote public safety. We promote public safety through mental health awareness classes. And we also have parenthood classes because one out of five people nationwide suffer from some type of mental health illness. It could be, a, uh, you could be dealing with anxiety attacks, schizophrenic, or you may be a kleptomaniac or pyromaniac. So it comes in all different ranges. So, you know, we try to build that bridge between the community and the people. We also have an uh, anti-violence unit. When I say anti-violence unit, that means that uh, we take our street credibility Whenever something happens to somebody in the street, if somebody gets shot, somebody gets killed, we have zero to do with the police, but we take it upon ourselves to find out what happened to who and why it happened to who, and we get both parties to, to come together and we try to stop it so it don't be no type of retaliation. So, you know, that's what we're doing inside the community. And as far as, like, you know, uh, we all got to come out. It's good that we out here today, you know, bad situation, but a good situation at the same token. But we all got to come out as adults and as leaders in the community and help the youth and help our community. And that's the only way that, you know, we won't be in situations where we got to come out like this. So with that being said, I'd like to thank everybody for inviting me here today. And let's keep the fight alive and let's keep going. Peace. You know, you're getting a little feedback. Well, just, just step back okay. two feet. Yeah, we're going to ask the sister to join us now, Sophia from... Um, the coalition to bring Mamiya home. Is I'm saying that right? Say it right. Hi everyone. Again, yes, I'm Sophia. I'm with the campaign to bring Mumia home, and I thank everyone who's here with us today for coming out and supporting this work, supporting this cause. It's been a 30-plus year movement, and we're still at it. We want Mumia freed. Nothing less than that. And this is why we're out here in the freezing cold to let it be known to everyone that this man is innocent and he must be freed now. Mumia has put his life on the line, Mumia's life is still on the line for our freedoms and 
we need to let everyone know and educate the masses what is happening to Mumia till this day. Mumia is still ill, he's still in need of proper treatment, full treatment, and it is still being denied to him. So again, we need to let it be known that we need him freed. That's the only way he's going to get the proper, the full and proper health care that he needs if he has his freedom. And it's also important that we continue this fight together, that we continue to unify the many different oppressive issues that we're fighting against. Because this is not just an issue for Mumia, but this is an issue around all the oppressions that we face day in and day out of our daily lives. So again, much love. Mumia sends his love, his solidarity, and we will free Mumia. Thank you. All right, on the move, everybody. We're going to keep this going for our brother Mumia Abu Jamal. This government has made every attempt to kill our brother Mumia. They tried on December 9th, 1981. They tried through legal, lethal execution in 95 and in 99. They tried by giving our brother life without parole. But our brother is still alive. He's still strong and still fighting. Now the latest they trying to kill our brother is through this disease called hepatitis C and cirrhosis of the liver. We made it loud and clear to this government that we will not let them take the life of our brother Momia Abu Jamal. We have fought valiantly for over 30 years to bring our brother home and we not stopping. We telling people on April 30th to pack the courthouse in Philadelphia as we continue to put pressure on this government to fight for the release of our brother Momia Abu Jamal. From 1981 and to now, we still haven't backed down. And we not backing down until our brother is home with us, where he belongs, with his family. Momia is innocent, and this government, they know Momia's innocent. They have went full-fledged outright to kill Momia, and we have not allowed it, and we are not going to allow it. But there's a serious issue that I want to address right now that our brother Zaid Mohammed talked about earlier. And that's the issue of our brother Herman Bell, who's done 45 years in prison, in, Cal in federal prison, in New York State prisons, after a successful fight, after a people's movement. Our brother has been granted parole. But they try to rescind our brother Herman Bell's parole and keep him in prison, saying he's a cold-blooded killer saying he's an assassin. But what about all the people that these cops murder out here on a daily basis? We just seen a young man killed in Sacramento. We seen Corin Gaines killed in Maryland. We seen Eric Garner choked out on camera. Why aren't they calling these, them legalized terrorists? Why are they not calling them murderers and assassins? They killing our children every day out here in these streets and they getting away with it with immunity. Parole is based on your prison record and the time served. It's not based on what the police say or what the parole board say. We keeping the pressure on this government to free our brother Herman Bell. And if the police are so interested in justice and in locking up killers, they point the finger at themselves and look at themselves in the mirror. Cause they the murderers. They the ones murdering our children shooting them 41 times, breaking their jaws, breaking their nightsticks over their heads, shooting elderly people like they did Eleanor Bumpers. They just try to shoplift us up in Whole Foods in Harlem, but they not addressing the issue of why he was up there shoplifting, because he was hungry. The first thing they want to say is he's mentally ill. We not accepting that. These police are mentally ill. The so-called liberal progressive mayor of this city is mentally ill. If he was about the people's movements, he would be back in parole for Herman Bell and not holding hands with these cops and taking his sides. Enough is enough. We want our brother Momia Abu Jamal home with us where he belongs. Momia's only crime was speaking out. He did what journalists are supposed to do. He spoke out. He told the truth. And that's the real reason why he on death row and in prison. He ain't in prison for killing no cop. He on death row for doing his work as a journalist.
This government knows Momia is innocent. They know he's innocent. Just like nine of my family members that they kidnapped on August 8, 1978, when the judge admitted that he had the faintest idea who did what. But he was sentencing my family because they was MOVE members. This government will call Leonard Peltier a criminal. They will call him a terrorist. When it was them that stole this land that Leonard Peltier and his ancestors were on. This land belonged to the Indians, the indigenous. The nerve of this mayor of the United States to say, let's make America great again. Let's give it back when this ain't even a land. How you want to kick people off of a land that's not even yours? We got serious work to do for Mobia to bring him home, to bring Leonard home, Herman, to bring all our political prisoners home. So let's keep the fight up, y'all, on the move. Long live John Africa. <clears throat> We're now going to have some solidarity. Oh, let me introduce myself again. I'm Suzanne Ross from International Concern Family and Friends of Mumia Abu Jamal. I want to remind everybody <clears throat> as we go on, and especially tourists from around the world who are here, if there are any tourists or people from other countries, <clears throat> please pay attention to the fact that we are an international movement, that we are here to support Mumia, all the political prisoners, and all injustice everywhere, that we are part of an international movement to fight the United States' oppression of people in this country and around the world. We have people here today from Puerto Rico, from Honduras, and we have been involved in the struggle in many countries. At this very moment, in this very week, there are protests in Toronto, in Canada, in South Africa. There are uh, hip-hop protests going on all day to support Mumia. In France, in the city of Saint Denis, which named a street in honor of Mumia Abu Jamal, there's going to be a program this week. In Germany, in London, and just to remind people again, we started a letter, an international letter, calling for Mumia's release from prison and calling for the district attorney in Philadelphia to release the records that indict, that show the complicity, the conspiracy in Philadelphia to kill Mumia. We have a chance to get those records released, and that's what a lot of this struggle is about right now. But ultimately, it's not about records. It's about freeing Mumia, and ultimately beyond Mumia. It's about freeing all our political prisoners, about freeing the people of this country from the oppression of people in this country. Just look around as we marched here. We had to go past people sleeping in the street, people hungry, people begging because they don't have food, and of course not medical care. We live in a horrific government-controlled by horrific corporate interests controlled in a society that does endless damage around the world. That's what Mumia stands for against all of that. He's the representative, the spokesperson, the voice of the voiceless, one of the leaders we have right in our midst fighting for justice, fighting for all the causes that we see coming up again and again. We've seen him write endless columns, send messages, publish from prison, eight books. Let me repeat, he's published, Mumia Bujamal has published eight wonderful books that are an education, more education than you'd get in any college if you read those books. And he's done all of that from prison. So he's a leader and a spokesperson because he's a remarkable person, but he's a leader because he cares about all of humanity. Because as people said earlier, he rarely speaks about his own case, rarely says anything about his own case, but about so many, so many voiceless people around the world in this country. So I want to thank everybody again for being here right off Times Square. The center of a lot of horrors, represents a lot of horrors, but this is where masses of people often are, and it's important that they hear us. 
It's important that they see the flyers we've given out. And so now we're going to get solidarity statements from different people who've participated. Thank you again. Long live Mumia. Long live our political prisoners. Long live the revolution. Long live the fight for justice. Free them all. Free Mumia. Free them all. Now we have Tony Ernstein from the PPA. Please join us, Tony. People's Power Assembly. Hi, everybody. I'm from the People's Power Assembly. And I, I mean, we're here today in solidarity and to demand that Mumia be freed, to demand that Herman Bell be released, and all political prisoners. So I wanted to just mention an action that's happening this Wednesday. As most of you know, Stephen Clark was murdered by the police on March 18th in Sacramento, California. They shot him 20 times in his own backyard. They said he had a weapon, it was a cell phone. So we're having a demonstration, the People's Power Assembly and NYC shut it down, Wednesday night, Columbus Circle at 7 p.m. So we have a Facebook page, if you can share it, that would be really great. Please come out, it's really, really important. I want to mention that yesterday, the PPA had a, a contingent, a stationary contingent in the march for our lives, and we had a very big banner and signs about Stephen Clark, and we got a tremendous, tremendous response. People really were glad that we were there and raising the question of his murder and all victims of racist police terror. So please, please join with us on Wednesday night, Columbus Circle, 7 p.m. Free Mumia and all political prisoners. Thank you, Free Mumia. Well, we got some housework to hold on a minute. Brothers and sisters, we want to address something here. We out here to put out information about our brother Mumia and what needs to be done. And we're not going to be diverted into nothing. We have a provocateur that's standing right there on the other side of the barricade. Yeah. Take, take your camera phones, take your cameras, and make sure you all catch his face. He's sitting out here to provoke people so that they have an excuse to shut this down and to arrest people. Let's be smart. Let's not divert into none of this here. Because as soon as we got into it with him, they started coming through the gate. So we got to be each other's security, watch each other's backs. If we have to give out information, give out information. But we are not going to be diverted or sidetracked from what we're doing here. Again, take your camera phones, get his picture, take his video, and anyone else that tries to provoke something out here. Because they're trying to shut us down and jump on us. So we got to keep our security tight and watch each other's backs and not be diverted into none of this foolishness. Thank you, brother. Right, let's stay tight. We're going to stay on point. Free Mamiya and all political prisoners now. We have Sister Shirley with us. Sister Shirley, who has been getting the leaflets out from Staten Island, from Harlem. We saw her today, how she really reached out to people. Because this is what we got to do. We got to talk to the workers. We got to talk to the masters. We got to talk to people who are unemployed, like Suzanne said. People who have been starved by this corporation. People who have been product of prison industrial complex and being in prison here right on street and parole, like me in Philadelphia. Me in Philadelphia. What is parole? Parole is prison outside. We know it very well. So let's stay tight and on point. Sister Shirley, join us. Okay. I'm here to let you all know that this whole, this whole, this whole, U.S. of A sucks, okay? Bottom line. It's supposed to be United States of America. No, it's not the United States of America. It's the me, myself, and I states of America. They don't give two rats ass about you or anybody else. It's white supremacists. They're out here, and they will squash any and anybody who, who has anything to stop them from getting their power their wants, their desires, their entertainment, their money, okay? The cops, the cops are puppets for them, okay? They, they carry what they do out for the white supremacists. Bottom line is, 
It's not only people in political prisoners, as political prisoners, it also has to do with what they're killing us with racism and dividing us. As far as, I'm gonna share with you, this paper right here. This paper right here shows just a little bit, a little bit of all the people who have been killed by the police all over the United States for years. And it continues. There's this book called Stolen Lives. It's thick, it's this thick. It only goes up to 1999. And it's filled with all different peoples all over the United States who have been killed. This is just a little taste right here. Could you hold this up for me, brother? Okay, this little sister right here, her name is Ayana Stanley Jones. She is, she was seven years old asleep on the couch in her grandmother's house in uh, 2010 in Detroit, Michigan. The cops came in with a smoke grenade. They came in, they shot her in the head. To make it more heinous, her grandmother was arrested. It was the wrong apartment. In 2006, this sister right here, 92 years old, Katherine Johnston. The cops came in with a, a no-knock, um, what do you call that thing, a no-knock warrant. They came in, they shot her dead. They found out it was the wrong house, and this time they tried to cover it up by planting drugs in her house. This young brother right here, Nicholas Hayward Jr., 13 years old in 1996. Four. Ironically, he was playing cops and robbers with a toy gun. The gun had a brown handle and an orange tip. The cops came in and shot him dead right here in Brooklyn in the Gowanus Project in 1994. Also in 1994, there was this brother, my Latino brother, Anthony Baez, 29 years old, in the Bronx. All he was doing was standing outside his house with his family members throwing a ball back and forth. A cop car drove by, the ball bounced off the cop car, the cops got out and choked him to death. Okay? Bottom line. Now, listen, that's, they came out with this so-called ban against the chokehold. That doesn't mean crap because they're still doing it. That's how they got away with doing it to my brother Eric Garner on Staten Island. He was just out there minding his own business. He had just finished stopping a fight, but the cops came in and they came in and they choked him to death. But he was targeted. Bottom line, he had sold Lucy back in the day. He sold Lucy, he was arrested several times for doing that. And to make it more heinous, you all know what a cavity search is? A cavity search is when the cops stick their finger up your ass. And they did that to Eric Gardner back in the days. He had a case against them. That's why they were targeting him. That day he didn't even have any Lucy's on him. That's why he said, I had enough. It stops today. But did that stop them? No. They still choked them out, which is a modern day lynching. Bottom line, they got away with it. They continue to get away with it because it is racism, because it is police brutality, because it is white supremacy. And to make it worse, he wasn't even the first person who was choked to death on Staten Island. In 1993, this Latino brother named Sayon, he was just going about his business. He saw some commotion, he sent red to see what was happening. The cops stopped him, roughed him up, and then they choked him to death. In 2002, this brother named Alfred Nelson, he went to the hospital under his own accord. He did not want to stay there. The cops came and force him to stay there by choking him to death. You know what happened to these cops? Nothing. 
nada, nine. Bottom line, they're still continuing to do what they do to us, but we need to stick together. And uh, fix this system? No, this system cannot be fixed. This system is working exactly how it's supposed to be working by design. You say put some, some cameras on the cops? So Ramsey Orta, Eric Gardner's friend, he wasn't a passerby, he took the video, right? He is our true hero. But we're not supposed to believe our lying eyes when we saw that video? I don't think so. We need to stick together. This system sucks. We need to come together and say, hey, you know what? It's not all about just voting. It's not all about just us um, thinking that we can leave it up to these politicians. That's a bunch of bull, okay? Yeah, the Blasio sold us out. Okay, uh, uh, what you call it, on uh, uh, Staten Island, all the council people sold us out. They voted for more cops, except for one sister who abstained, Ines Barron, the only one who had some guts. But they, they do what they do because, you know what, they are part of the system, a bunch of sellouts. But we need to stick together, and you know what? The more we stick together, it's going to work. We need a revolution. We really do. We really do. And as far as I'm concerned, we need to stick together and not be divided. We don't have to agree with each other, but we have to stick together. Free Mumia! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Our next speaker is a woman who many of you may have heard about way back, Sharan Salam, who played an incredible role in defending her son as part of the Central Park Five when they were framed and lynched by this city, by officialdom, by even many so-called progressive people who believe the story about them. And Sharan, was a phenomenal fighter and a mother who inspired many of us who are right here into working for the Central Park Five. And she has never, never stopped, not only for her son and his brothers who were framed at that time, but for all oppressed people. So please give Joran a warm welcome. Well, I'm glad to be out here and show my support for this movement, for this man, for this time. And we at Justice for the Wrongfully Incarcerated know what it is to be locked up for something you did not do. And not being able to get any justice, to get any kind of clarity to help you to get out of jail. I know it's our hope here and our hope for all wrongfully incarcerated people that they are free Free them all. Just freeing Mamiya is not enough. It's so many more that we don't have the names of that need to be freed. Now, as we work to try to get Mamiya out of jail and get him the health services he's in dire need of, don't forget all of those other people who are there. And remember, justice, 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 justice for the wrongfully incarcerated. I'm not going to take much time because there's so many more who want to speak, but stand tall for justice. Stand tall for the wrongfully incarcerated. And stand tall with each other. Okay, our next speakers of the People's Power Assembly. Come and join us right up front and please speak to people here. Okay, independent activists for Mumia and for justice. I just coined a new title for them. Thank you. We don't need another group, but we may need a title sometimes. <laughs> um, I'm going to start off with, well, as you can see, this is the Puerto Rican flag. But I have to point out something. This is the incorrect blue. This blue is for the Vendepatria, the sellout. They want to be famous. So I'm not really going to represent this flag here because the real blue is like that of the sky. 
for the independence of Puerto Rico. And I'm going to start off with something I was writing concerning the colonialism of Puerto Rico so that we could get further into what internationalism is. So if I mess up, excuse me, okay? July 25th, 1898, Borinquen, which is, you know it as Puerto Rico, Borinquen was invaded by the United States with 16,000 troops of their military forces. These cowards walked our land making false promises disguised as protection. These lives had no objection. My people have been fooled into this colonial rule. And this is what we're fighting for right now. All of us are in, co in, in colonial issues. When you see Mamia, this is how we free Oscar Lopez Rivera, one of our own, doing this. Because when you look, let me, let me just quote what Malcolm X has said, because this is not about religion, because remember, he got to a point where it was about unity for the black people, and that Malcolm X was going to, him and MLK was going to get together for the liberation of black people. It wasn't about religion anymore. Okay, but let me quote one thing that Malcolm X said. If you're not careful, the newspaper will have you hate the oppressors and not, wait, wait, hate the oppressed and not the oppressors. So when you look up, when you Google Mumia, you're going to see cop killers. When you Google Lolita Lebron right here, terrorist. When you Google Osana Shakur, she's a cop killer. When you Google Oscar Lopez Rivera that's free, like it says on my button right here, free, he's a bomber. But he wasn't. When you look at these cases, they didn't get arrested for what they're saying, what the media is telling you. Because he never bombed anything. What did he get arrested for? Seditious conspiracy. What the hell is seditious conspiracy? Oh, to so overthrow the government. Wait a minute, wait a minute. But the Declaration of Independence said that we could do that, right? And you said that we Puerto Ricans are citizens, but without our vote, we didn't get to choose that. You only gave us that because you wanted our man to fight your war. When Oscar Lopez Rivera fought in Vietnam, okay, and won a bronze medal for this, when he was in Vietnam, the Vietnamese sat next to him, pointed at their arms, and his arm and said, we're the same. Okay? So we got veterans that come here and they understand like our hero, your Malcolm X, Ala Bisu Campos is the same. We got people that fight and come back here and know what it is. They don't care about our veterans here. They're just using your last palm. So what? The white supremacist war. That's exactly what it is. We're not gonna cover it anymore. Okay? So this is why I'm here in support of Mamia, healthier. Nina Dross, which is one of our Puerto Rican uh, fight, freedom fighters in Borinquen. Nina Dross, Franco. Ana Belen, conscious fighter for Cuba. Okay? We need freedom for our people. We need to decolonize everywhere, know who we are, and unite. Free Mamia! Free Mamia! Thank you, that is all. Before I introduce our next speaker, I just want to quote from Frank Fanon. Frank Fanon, in his wisdom, observes and says, each generation, out of relative obscurity, must discover their mission, fulfill or betray it. We have in front of us Brother Tariq, who was a member of the Black Panther Party and answered the call and he paid a heavy price for it and we must never forget our freedom fighters because he fought alongside of people like Mumia and he fought to end the war in Vietnam and he fought to free people of color in this society who were denied such and who are misled into believing that somehow or another this is the greatest place on earth for people who want to be free. And nothing could be further from the truth. I want to bring on to address the audience, Brother Tariq. Peace, family. I want to start off by saying that Mumir loves you. He loves you for being out here, for sacrificing your time and your effort to free him. As you know, Mumia Abu-Jamal is innocent. And Mumia is really 
following the code on the street. Mumia did not kill the police officer, and Mumia went to help the police officer, but I think that because the police officer did not know who shot him, he shot Mumia not knowing that Mumia was really trying to help him. And Mumia did not kill the police, but he followed the code on the street. He is not his job to tell who shot the police. That's what you have detectives for. And I want to say too, I love you because you are intelligent. You study what is going on in the world and that is why you're here. And being here is also a part of your studying. And I want to say too, I love you because you are courageous. And one of the reasons why the authorities have Mumia in prison is to silence any dissent. No one is to say anything. It is only to be the line put out by the authorities. So the reason, one of the reasons why they have Mumia in prison is because Mumia was putting out the, the thoughts of the people. And I love you because in spite of them having locked Mumia up in order to terrorize him, you are out here. That means that you are very courageous to people, very courageous people. It means that you have made a good decision. It also means that you know a human being is the most valuable entity in the world. And you are out here to say not only that black lives matter, that all lives matter, and that is another reason why you are out here. Now, I want to say too, you are on the right side. I am a veteran, and I did not get medals like Oscar Lopez Rivera. I turned down my medals. That's right, I'm a Vietnam veteran. I didn't get the medals because I turned them down. And I want to say, I know these people. Because when I was in Vietnam with them, and I used to walk around and see them with necklaces on, I thought they had potato pillars that they had made into necklaces. So one day I said, let me stop this guy and see what kind of necklace does he have. I said, let me take a close look at that. They had a lot of guys walking around on the base with ears made into a necklace to show that they had confirmed kills. So I knew I was on the wrong side. So I got out of that, out of that international police force. As a Marine, the Marines are international police. I was a member of the international police force and I saw that I was on the wrong side. I saw that the side I was on was carrying out oppression and was uh, enabling the rich to exploit people. And I saw that. And when I was in the, 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 uh, the Marines, when I was in the Marines, my feelings was that should I have been wounded or killed while in uniform, it was my fault because I was on the wrong side. I was on the side that was oppressing people and I was on the side that was enabling the rich to exploit people. So you want to know that you are doing a very good thing. Mumia loves you. I love you, and you are definitely on the right side. Thank you for your attention. Oh, let, let, me, let me just say this about Herman Bell. Uh, Herman Bell is coming out. I'm sorry I didn't mention. Herman Bell is a close friend of mine, and Herman Bell is coming out. Herman Bell is on the right side. We are on the right side, you know? And, and let me tell you this. When they, killed, when they killed another friend of mine, they shot him 82 times. And the people in the community was complaining because when they shot Twyman Myers 82 times, they had a party in the precinct and they got all drunk up and came outside the precinct and were shooting up the neighborhood. That's how we found out that they, they was doing that. They didn't come on the news. It never did come on the news. We found out from the community that a lot of shooting was going on in the neighborhood and the people came out to their windows to see what all the shooting was about and the shooting was about they were celebrating that they had killed Twyman Myers and that they had shot him 82 times 82 times and I won't even mention them killing my brother uh, and killing my niece I won't even mention the authorities doing that but they are carrying out genocide and at some point they're going to realize you're on the wrong side. And I just want to ask them this. In the black community, the precincts are always hot. Always hot. We, we got it on tape. The police are saying, why do they have the windows closed up? And it's so hot in here. 
and you know it, it's hot in here, and after you're in, in that heat situation for an hour, you don't feel like you're hungry, you feel like you're starving, and you continuously eat, and after a while, like Eric Adams, you get diabetes. That's what's going on. So they've been, all the police in the black community, in the black, in the precincts in the black community, they have been sacrificed. That's what the government thinks about them. And my name is Tyree James Haskins. So let's be clear about that. Right. Thank you very much. Forward Tyree. Hey, we have a couple of more speakers, and I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, we have Steve Milley, um, Milley's from Workers' World Party. One of the biggest lies in the frame-up of Mumia Abu-Jamal in the attempt to first execute him, to keep him on death row for years, and then try to kill him with untreated hepatitis C, is the charge against him is officially, I believe, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania versus Mumia Abu-Jamal. Pennsylvania is no commonwealth. It should have read the wealthy of Pennsylvania and the entire United States against this freedom fighter. Who really runs Pennsylvania? It's not working in poor people. There are more DuPont estates in Pennsylvania than there are in Delaware. The melons that control Alcoa and Mellon, uh, New York Bank Mellon, they wanted to execute Mumia. 45 years before super racist Donald Trump got into the White House, these super rich families in what they call the main line outside of Philadelphia, the wealthy area of nothing but mansions, they put super racist Frank Rizzo in Philadelphia City Hall who told his supporters to quote unquote vote white. This is Philadelphia, old money, it's old racist money, just like the so-and-sos that built the Interborough Rapid Transit train right below you. Didn't build it, it was subway workers that built it, who financed it was a guy called Arthur Belmont Jr., whose father was the titan of Wall Street during the Civil War, was for the Confederacy against the Emancipation Proclamation. He got his money partly from a slave plantation in Louisiana, and some of that capital ended up in the subway. Now there's over 2.3 million people in jail. Not one of them is a millionaire. There isn't one millionaire in death row. 2.3 million people in prison in the United States. How come Dick Cheney isn't in jail? How come George Bush isn't in jail? I want to talk to people across the street there, working people, try, probably try to wonder, how are you going to pay your rent? Or how are you going to pay your mortgage? Does jailing Mumia help you in any way at all? We need a new society. We need a revolution. We need the prisons free. And we have to, first of all, fight for the freedom of all the truth tellers, like Mumia Abu Jamal. He was jailed for telling the truth just like Ramsey Ota in, in Staten Island. They kill truth tellers, truth tellers like Malcolm X. So we have to organize and fight to free Mumia, all the political prisoners, to free the jails and put the rich people and the killer cops in them instead. Thank you. All right. We have our brother from Honduras who is joining us. Please forward. So thank you. Thank you for Action Center for giving me this opportunity today from here. So I want to speak for all community in Honduras. So we are here together. We are together to fight for one right. We want all political prisoners within the free. Because we have a lot of innocent people in the jail for fight for his right. So this guy here. So this is Omar Suazo, he's from Honduras. He's in the jail because he's defending the Gaudi from the land. He's innocent too. That's why we are here today. 
Este es Omar Suazo, hondureño. Está preso por defender las tierras garífunas en Honduras. Estamos aquí hoy unidos a este grupo de Action Center pidiendo justicia para todos los políticos presos, porque hay muchos presos inocentes y eso le corresponde a la ley hacer su trabajo y buscar quién hizo el crimen. Este mensaje va para todo aquel carífuna, para todos los líderes, que las tierras carífunas no son vendibles, no son hipotecables tampoco. Y el presidente que está actualmente, le hacemos saber de que todos los carífunas nos vamos a unir para pelear por nuestras tierras, porque las tierras carífunas son ancestrales. Vamos a defenderlas porque es el fruto y es el futuro para todos nuestros ancestros y los hijos de los hijos de nuestros nietos. Lo que está en Honduras hoy, que es una corrupción tan grande, este líder garífuna que está aquí no pudo aceptar la corrupción ya que él fue totalmente, totalmente que él fue chantajeado por los líderes políticos en el país. Al no aceptarlo, el chantaje está preso. Al presidente de los líderes de Honduras y al presidente Trump, por haber aceptado un gobierno que actualmente no fue elegido por el pueblo en Honduras. Le pedimos al presidente Trump que ponga en el poder al gobierno que el pueblo eligió. Y las tierras garífunas que están en las playas, también le hacemos ver al presidente que todas las playas garífunas que él quiere convertir en turismo, pedimos respeto a las leyes garífunas, a las tierras garífunas, a las playas ancestrales que no son aptas para el turismo, siempre y cuando la comunidad sea tomada en cuenta y se respete el derecho, podrá hacer turismo en las comunidades. Por lo cual le pedimos a, toda, a todos los que están aquí en la 42 y 7 de Nueva York Times Square que apoyen a todas las comunidades tarifas por las injusticias que hay en Honduras. So, pedimos libertad a todos los presos políticos. Libertad. 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 Justicia. 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 Thank you. Yeah. We have Gil from the New York Coalition of Free Mamiya. Hi. Um, so we, I'm going to talk about April 30th, but I'm going to start a little earlier, okay? Uh, so, first of all, the answer to re one of the central uh, demands of this march is to pr open up to, to release the case files in Mumia's case. And if that happens, we're going to find out the answer to Tariq's question, which is the fact that they know for 30 years that Kenneth Freeman was there, and they hid it from the jury in his original trial, okay? And, okay, the second thing I want to talk about is hepatitis C, okay? We went to court in Scranton a couple of years ago because there was a guy who invented Harmony, which is a cure for hepatitis C, and he wanted it to be free for people to be sold at cost like penicillin, okay? But the pharmaceutical cartel in this country got a hold and bought the formula from the company that he worked for and a $10 pill, $800 for treatment anywhere else in the world, they jacked up the price to $80,000, okay? So we went to court to get the Harmony for Mumia, but because we won, thousands of other prisoners and veterans who are being denied Harmony and people on Medicaid who are being denied Harmony are now suing to get Harmony, okay? So this is not just about Mumia, okay? The same thing, When we go to court now, April 30th, they're supposed to, uh, they're supposed to release the, the files on, on the actions of, of, of Judge, uh, former DA Castile, who ended up on the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, okay? But the memo that we've already found, okay, which indirectly references other memos that they're hiding, 
okay, and that we need released. It doesn't just affect Mumia, it affects 70 other families who can also sue for a new trial because they, they, their, um, their appeals were judged by the same person who prosecuted them, okay? So again, this is not just for Mumia, but we go down to Philadelphia all the time. This is the first time in 10 years since we sued on Batson jury selection, okay? That we have an opportunity to get a real hearing and a real look at the facts in Mumia's case. So it is really important to come down to Philadelphia April 30th, to get on the bus, and even from the Solidarity Center, okay? Because we need to pack the courtroom, we need to get in the streets, because this is, this is gonna affect justice. There are, I forget the number, something like 30 police officers in Philadelphia that the, that the former DA identified as being corrupt and lying and, and, and quietly said should never testify in court. The new DA, who we're trying to get to release the files, has released the names of those corrupt police officers. So there are hundreds, maybe thousands of cases in Philadelphia that may get a fair hearing now, the Innocence Project, etc., because of the work that we're doing around Lumia and other political prisoners. And it's also about all the other political prisoners, the Move family, Ahed Tamimi, all the all the other political prisoners in this country and around the world because it's it's all one system okay don't get fooled when they have political prisoners in other countries it's all part of the same global capitalist imperialist system that's locking people up that, that wants people to die so they can make eighty thousand dollars okay thank you oh and i i got if you want to come we got bus tickets today otherwise get a hold of us uh, 212-330-8029, or you can get tickets at the Solidarity Center. Um, but please come down to Philadelphia with us or on your own because we need to be out there because that's how we get the results we need. Sarah Calinato. Labor against racist terror, Sarah Calinato. I just want to say that this is a union issue. We are out here fighting for jobs, not jails. And this prison industrial complex, which Romia exposed so eloquently, we're fighting for schools, not jails, not austerity and cutbacks. Like the teachers had to go on strike just to get a living wage all over different states in this country, in Puerto Rico, in Mexico, and other places. Mumia is a member of the National Writers Union, that's the United Auto Workers Local 1981, and they have resolved many times in support of his right to a fair trial. Healthcare workers in 1199 have resolved in support of the Hep C cure being available to him and all people in prison and all who need it. We have resolutions from postal workers down at the sorting plant some years ago, they had all ribbons to free Mumia one day. We had mine workers in South Africa and the Congress of South African Trade Unions resolving for Mumia. Don't be afraid to take this issue to your workplace organization. And if you need examples of those resolutions and that labor support for this cause, you can check the social media, Labor Against Racist Terror. You can go, I don't want to advertise the platform because it's a, you know, a corporate thing, but you know what to do. Look it up and then search the post for uh, Mumia. The other thing is that, of course, jobs that people could have that could be organized to have collective bargaining and fair wages and benefits are being enforced onto people locked up in prison at slave wages, which they're allowed to by the 13th Amendment. So we need to bring this together. We need jobs, not jails. We need schools, not jails. We need housing, not jails. And Mumia has said, the prison system in this country is the largest public housing project. There's more people sleeping there. And there's more people with disabilities in jail than in treatment and you know hospitalization if they need it and other kinds of rehab. So, fight on, free Mumia, jobs not jail. The police, free them all. Palestine, Palestine. Palestine, free, free Palestine. Greetings comrades, my name is Lilia. I'm part of the committee to stop FBI repression. 
as well as within our lifetime, United for Palestine. And I, I'm going to be very brief. Uh, we condemn the political repression of uh, Mumia Abu Jamal and all political prisoners in the past and what is happening right now. Um, also, denying him medicine for his for his disease is not not only keeping him decades in jail, but not giving him the right the right treatment, not giving him uh, good conditions. Um, but I also want to talk about political prisoners in Palestine because, let's face it, Israel is just a continuation of the, the U.S. imperialism. And we know that the IDF trains NYPD who is right here. NYPD is another agency. The FBI is not the only one that is repressing, um, repressing people. So, Ahed uh, Tamimi, which you already mentioned, she's been in prison since, since December. And she just turned 17 in January. This is a child prisoner. Her mother was, was in prison the same day. So this has been already three months. For what? For defending her land, for de defending her home, for defending her family. And her, her, her whole family has been imprisoned or injured or killed. And now recently she's been going to court one day after another, and she was recently sent for, sentenced to eight months in prison. So we call for, we call for the release of Ahed Tamimi, for her mother Nettie Man Tamimi, for the, for the liberation of Gaza, which is the largest open prison, open air prison, for freedom in Palestine, for um, the release of Mumia Abu Jamal and all political prisoners here in the U.S. Um, so, free Palestine and free political prisoners. There is only one solution, Intifa the revolution. There is only one solution, Intifa the revolution. There is only one solution, Intifa the revolution. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Thank you. Free, free Palestine. Got lady in the house, ABWU, come join us. Okay. Solidarity forever. I was, I was one of the postal workers that Sarah was just talking about a number of yeah yeah and Sarah gave us a big help in getting the green ribbons out which we distributed among uh, many 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 people at the uh, sorting plant at, at that time where I worked and I encourage anybody who is in a large uh, not even a larger if you're in a union get your union to pass a resolution if it hasn't passed one already uh, get your green ribbons out, you know, that ought to be revived for periods like this one, for greater activity when there's a court date coming up, solidarity with Mumia, because we recognize that the, the prison complex, like back in the day, like the slave power back in the day, is terrorizing communities, and whenever it terrorizes communities, it drives down wages, working conditions, benefits, pensions for all of us, even if we are on the outside. So it's one struggle. And I'll just wrap it up by saying, you know, our slogan is an injury to one is an injury to all. An injury to one is an injury to all. Free Mumia Abu Jamal. Thank you. Free Mumia, free Jamal. We'd like to thank everybody for coming out today. We had a real international offensive to free Mumia and free them all. We just heard from Palestine, Puerto Rico, Honduras. We have in Raleigh's in San Denis, Raleigh's in South Africa, Raleigh's in London. We got a portrait 
from Argentina, uh, well, from Mexico. We had a real international day to free Mamiya and all political prisoners. We had rallies in Detroit. We had rallies in Oakland. There will be a rally in Philadelphia and somewhere else in California. Then we have the court date tomorrow, March 27 and April 30th. Most of all, we have got back into the street. Most of all, we are talking to the workers. Yesterday, we passed out thousands of flyer to free Mamiya in the court date to the student march against the RIA and the police yesterday. So the students are embracing it. So we're on the move back in the neighborhood, in Philly and in communities and around the world. We like to thank our videographers for getting the word out farther. We like to thank the people for doing the literature. We like to thank the people that did the chat sheet, the people who helped pick up the, the sound system because it makes all of us a part of a fighting machine that will enable us. I'll give a fist up to the Black Liberation flag up back there. All right that will consolidate us to make us a machine to go forward, to fight for jobs, to fight against racism, white supremacists, to disarm the police, and to free Mamir, Abu Jamal, and all political prisoners. Brother Sahib, come join us. Join us. Join us. All right, all of us. All, all power to the people, y'all. Give yourselves a strong round of applause. It's not a million of us today, but we're all over the world. And what you did today, you accomplished your mission. You let the community know that we want when we are free. You let the international community know that you want when we are free. You demonstrated solidarity with people all over the, all over the world, demanding and showing that you want when we are free. And we continue to do that. I just wanted to say one thing before we wrap up. It's very instructive that we were here and we saw the folks dressed up for Disney, the Disney pictures, be very careful about this. We got a big film that just came out called Black Panther. Great big pretty fantasy film. Fantasy film. Tariq Haskins is a real panther. Right? The CIA has never been a friend of African people. We need to be careful about that. And when we see caricaturization that is one of the hallmark uh, cultural expressions of genocide. We need to be real, real careful about what we're looking at with Disney coming at us, distorting and misdirecting us about our culture and our history. We got some real Panthers to get free. Herman Bell supposed to come home on April 17th. He's a real Panther we want him free. Jaleel Mutakim is co-defendant, 45 years deep, a real Panther, and we want him free. Seth Hayes is one of his comrades from the New York chapter, a real Panther, and we want him free. Ed Poindexter way out in the Midwest, a real Panther, and we want him free. In case you forgot, this man whose name we hear today, Mumia Abu Jamal, is a real Panther, and we want him free. So we say, on to April 30th, bum rush the show, pack the courtroom, DA, give up them goddamn documents, and give up Mumia Abu Jamal. The time has come to free Mumia. What's the call? Free him 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 What's the call? What's the call? What's the call? What's the call? Oh, power to the people! Oh, power to the people! Oh, power to the people! We'll see you in the world.